We're off to the Buckeye State to visit Nationwide Arena in Columbus, Ohio. Let's go. Hey there, and welcome back to Ranks Around the League. I'm your host, Jeff Nash, and on this episode, we're heading to Nationwide Arena in Columbus, Ohio, home of the Columbus Blue Jackets of the NHL. Construction of Nationwide started on May 26, 1998, and opening day was September 9th, the year 2000, at a cost of $175 million, and is owned by Franklin County Convention Facilities Authority. Its seating capacity is 18500 and its scoreboard measures 22.6 by 14 feet. Secondary ticket price ranks them 18th in the league at $126. In March 2012, Nationwide Insurance and the Dispatch Publishing Group sold Nationwide Arena to the Franklin County Convention Facilities Authority, or the FCCFA. As part of this sale, Nationwide agreed to lend the FCCFA $43.3 million to finance the arena's purchase, which will be paid back by 2039 with casino tax revenue collected by both the City of Columbus and Franklin County. In addition, the Ohio Department of Development agreed to a 10-year, $10, $10 million loan to the FCCFA to assist with the facility's purchase. If the Blue Jackets meet annual roster payroll requirements, $500,000 of this loan per year will be forgiven. Nationwide Insurance will also pay the Blue Jackets $28 million to retain the arena's naming rights until 2022, as well as a $58 million purchase, which would give them a 30 percent ownership stake in the franchise. Whew, <laughs> that was a lot of information. The main takeaway is that based on this agreement, the Blue Jackets have to remain in the city until the year 2039 or risk paying $36 million in damages. Nationwide Arena unfortunately has some sad history attached to it. Unfortunately, it was the scene where a 13-year-old Brittany Cecil died as a result of injuries sustained from a flying puck during a game between the Columbus Blue Jackets and the Calgary Flames. For those who aren't hockey fans, it's quite common for pucks to fly into the crowd during the play. And it can be quite dangerous, especially if you're not paying attention. Because of this tragic event, the NHL decided to make it mandatory for all their facilities to install nylon mesh nettings on the ends of the rinks to help prevent Aaron pucks from flying into the stands. Now moving on to the rink itself, it's impossible to talk about Nationwide Arena without talking about the cannon. In fact, to give you the full effect, when I was last in Columbus as a member of the visiting team, we lost 6-3. So that meant I heard the cannon a total of eight times. <laughs> To give you some quick Canon facts, the Canon is a 12 pounder model 1857 Napoleon authentic reproduction. It has a full scale barrel. The wall at the breech is two and a half inches thick and is made of heavy walled steel seamless tubing. Now the... The bore is four and a half inches. The length is 11 feet, 10 inches, and its width is 68 inches. And it weighs 1,564 pounds. The cannon was handmade by an individual craftsman in 2005 and purchased by the Blue Jackets in 2007. The cannon fires smoke and a simultaneous pyrotechnic concussion when the team hits the ice at the start of the game when the Blue Jackets score a goal and at the end of the game when the Blue Jackets win. <laughs> Now the cannon is a very important symbol for the Blue Jackets. And what I thought was fun was they put cannonballs into the walls for every single goal scored. And they got the player who scored that goal to sign that ball. That's a pretty cool touch. But it's loud and shocks you every time. In fact, it annoyed a lot of people during the 2015 NHL All-Star Game when the cannon went off 12 times during the high scoring affair. Mind you, that's only four more times than when I was there. Now one thing's for certain. Columbus is probably the best kept secret in the NHL. The rink is gorgeous. The rink is located basically downtown, so you're really close to a lot of restaurants and bars and entertainment. Now the whole building has kind of a red brick feel to it, and it's pretty impressive when you walk the main concourse. Coupled with that cannon, it makes for an overall great experience. <laughs> So I'd have to say that Columbus is a hidden gem in the NHL. I would have never have thought to have gone there, but now that I've been, I highly recommend it for hockey fans. It's a pretty cool rink. I mean, you don't automatically pair hockey with Columbus, and uh, <laughs> they try really hard to be the hot ticket in town, and I think they succeed for the most part. Now, is there anything I don't like? Well, I mean, overall, the cannon is pretty cool. But, oh my god, when you're a member of the visiting team and you're getting waxed, 
it gets really annoying. But I guess that's the whole point of it, right? On the next episode of Rings Around the League, we head off to Dallas, Texas, to the American Airlines Center, home of the Dallas Stars. As always, follow me on Twitter and Instagram at underscore the rinks, on Facebook at the rinks, and on YouTube at Rinks Around the League. Hit subscribe and ring that bell. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. Oh, that was good. That was good. Oh, wait a second. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, no. Oh, make it stop. Make it stop.